So indeed, the question is uh, about the sessile and pedunculated uh, polyp resection um, techniques. Um, first of all, I have some disclosures uh, to make um, that are on this slide. And of course, yes, now we are going to discuss the, the real work, the, the polypectomies. So um, I would like to stress first that before we start resecting a polyp, and it has been mentioned already today, of course, is that structured assessment of the lesion is of utmost importance. Um, because we want to know what, what lesion we deal with and we need to decide on the optimal therapy. Um, and um, uh, things we have to look for are things like location, size, morphology, and then also the optical diagnosis, including the demarcation of the lesion. And demarcation might be very easy, like in this polyp, but again, for example, for the sessile serrated lesions, demarcation is not always that easy. And of course, it's important to demarcate the lesion well to make sure you do a uh, complete resection. The care study of Heiko Pohl, already now eight, um, nine years old, uh, showed us that indeed we quite often perform a radical resection once you start um, um, uh, analyzing that by taking biopsies from the rim of the previous uh, of the polypectomy. And especially what he saw is that that, that was um, uh, especially the case for the SSLs when you care, compared them to adenomas. So 31% versus 7.2%. Uh, and I think you can see here two nice cases where you see that a resection has been performed of an SSL, but there's still several parts of the SSL still in situ. And also here, part has been taken out, but this is still um, left in situ. So do demarcate before, um, and that's exactly uh, what I would like to highlight for the SSLs. So you can do that with using, of course, your um, high quality uh, endoscopes, your high definition, then using maybe BLI or, uh, or NBI, uh, but also submucosal injection with some dye may help you very well. Um, and these are two examples on the left, one of us SSL and on the right of a larger um, adenoma that, of course, then the, the, the rims of the, the demarcation of the polyp becomes much more clear, so you can resect it radically. So when discussing the polypectomy techniques, there's, there's different kinds. There is the, um, the cold snare polypectomy and the hot snare, and then, of course, the more advanced techniques that, that uh, the, the, the next speaker will discuss, like piecemeal EMR, ESD, or maybe even full thickness resection for early cancers. So when we decide on polypectomy, of course, there's several issues we all the time have to consider. First, um, of course, effectivity, because we need to uh, completely take the lesion out, but also safety, and then things like costs and your time management and all those other things, because it would be nice to resect it in relatively short time as well, of course. We nowadays have, a, have really the, the cold revolution time. So many lesions can be taken out by cold snare. Um, especially all lesions smaller than one centimeter. Um, it should be uh, done completely. We have to take a normal margin. However, then it's very quick and easy technique and especially also safe even in patients using anticoagulants. And this was one of the first studies published um, on this topic where patients even with anticoagulation still had a 0% bleeding uh, post polypectomy compared to the conventional group with 14%. And since then, many other studies have been uh, published and we know now that this is a very safe technique. So we usually use a dedicated snare that is stiff, that's thin and usually a monofilament and usually has about uh, a, a size of nine to 10 millimeter. It cuts easy. Um, and, and, and the thing is that the dedicated cold snares are usually superior in achieving complete histologic eradication. Traditional snares may be used as well if you maybe want to combine both hot snare polypectomy and then later cold snare. Of course, you might want, might want to scrap the same snare, but there might be an increased risk of injury to the submucosal arteries with maybe higher bleeding rates and lower complete resection rates. Not really clear yet. So how about my practical trips and uh, tips and tricks here? Well, the most important issue as has been discussed already today is to uh, position the polyp at the five o'clock position. 
um, ensure your snare is parallel to the mucosal surface. Keep a margin of normal mucosa. There's not going to be any coagulative effect. So you really have to reject the lesion radically. Um, apply firm downward pressure with tip deflection, and then maybe deflate a little gas, but not too much because you uh, don't want to get too much tissue into your uh, cold snare. After cold snaring, there's often a little bleeding. However, that usually stops while waiting and you have to inspect all of course, like always, the res uh, resection the margins afterwards to make sure you have not left any tissue with water pump irrigation. This is actually a resection that um, my um, fellow did with me. So I said, I have to record a video for um, the course on Saturday, so, so let's do it. So this was a patient with MAP. So the fellow had many opportunities to practice his um, his uh, cold snare polypectomy technique because we had to take out about 25 lesions. <coughs> Excuse me. And here he's um, trying to position his snare nicely. Um, the, the, the polyp is not at five o'clock, but it's not at a very, very bad position either, I think. And you can see he resected that lesion and now he's going to do two other ones very near to each other. So place the tip. I think this is a little bit close, but he has to struggle a little bit to get the position right. So indeed five o'clock now would have been better, I would say. So he's struggling a little bit more, puts down the snare. So on the back side, I'm not absolutely convinced about the radicality, but I think when we inspect it afterwards, it becomes more clear. This was a nice radical resection. So this is the acute bleeding that you usually see when doing this. We don't worry at all about that. And um, you can clean a little bit more and even if you want, put your MBI on to make sure that you can see here, those were nice radical resections. Um, so the question is, when you do this, there is often a white protrusion and people are sometimes worried that this is still a part of the polyp. Um, well, usually the, the white protrusions are there uh, when the lesions are, are larger, a little bit larger, like six millimeters and above. And don't worry about this because this is muscularis mucosae, as was um, described by Tutucci already uh, seven years ago. So it's not residual polyp, it's not vessels, and it's not associated with any adverse outcomes. So is there any exceptions by resecting uh, uh, polyps smaller than one centimeter this way? Well, as I said, um, flat SSLs might be difficult to delineate. So you might even think it's one centimeter and it might actually even be much larger. So I would recommend if you're not sure about the delineation, consider or, or perform lifting with chromo. You can very nicely do cold snaring after that. Um, stalked polyps, I will get that to do, back to that in a minute. That depends on the size. And then, of course, lesions with the suspicion of invasive growth should not be removed in such a gold uh, fashion. <coughs> so this is um, uh, the submucosal dye injection with nice uh, demarcation uh, with gold piece milliamar. Um, and this can also now be done for um, larger lesions. So larger SSLs really actually at, at the moment, I would say this is becoming also gold standard um, resection technique. So we can take uh, after lifting the lesion, nicely small pieces, exactly like we would do for um, hot snare piece milliamar and resect the lesion and have really nice crisp and sharp edges. And we know, for example, from a retrospective study from the group from um, Michael Burke, that um, uh, he, when using a cold snare piecemeal um, polypectomy, he uh, showed uh, high technical um, success rates and low adverse events. And this was a um, retrospective study again, so no prospective state data yet, but I think this is um, uh, already quite nice um, evidence. I have a video here of a patient with serrated polyposis syndrome. You saw already in the back, we took um, already some other polyps out. You also see there the nice white protrusion, but this is another lesion. Actually, it's not yet really clear where the margins of this lesion are, I would say. So we start injecting it a little bit more and more, and then probably we will be much better be able to see the margins of this SSL. 
of course, by lifting it, it becomes a bit larger as well. And it, um, that's why sometimes it's debated whether you um, decrease the chance of taking the polyp out in one piece. Yes, you do probably, but I think still this is a very preferable method for these lesions. It's safe and also you're much more sure about um, the uh, radicality because you can see the, um, the uh, delineation so well. So this is, um, well, the regular piecemeal polypectomy technique. Make sure you keep a rim of normal mucosa when you do this, like we discussed before. And piece by piece, this lesion is, is, is taken out. A few more here. We're getting there now. So of course, at the end, it's going to be really important to inspect the sides of the lesion well, but you can see how nice and sharp the edges of this polypectomy side are going to be. And you can be almost 100% sure there's no remnant left when you do it very systematically. You can see the very nice sharp rims without any um, serrated tissue left. So I do love this technique for the um, SSLs. Now it's a debate, but I will leave this a little bit more to the next speaker that maybe this would also could also be a preferable technique for larger adenomas. And this was a study, and since th there's other studies as well already published, showing that that can also be safely done. Those lesions weren't too large here, less than uh, 14 millimeters, but you can see also um, uh, histologic complete resections quite often and, um, um, and it was safe. So now we get back to the uh, stalked polyps. Um, those, of course, the difficulty is that they might be large, which is sometimes makes it difficult to catch the head in your snare. And there's a risk of, of bleeding. Risk factors for bleeding that are known um, from studies is that a larger stalk, larger than five millimeters, the head larger than 10 millimeters, location in the right side of the colon, and those that uh, appear malignant. This is the European guideline, and actually um, um, they uh, state that when the head is larger than 20 millimeters or the stalk larger than five, we should do pre-treatment measures to prevent um, um, post-polypectomy bleeding. They state it can be done by either adrenaline or mechanical hemostasis, and that's still relatively vague. So there are several studies published, and here's two of them, uh, RCTs showing that mechanical devices alone or in combination with adrenaline significantly decrease the bleeding risk compared to adrenaline alone. So mechanical devices, I would say, are really preferred in those cases. And in my center, we really like the endoloop. Uh, we use it for those um, high-risk lesions. Um, however, it's always really important that my nurse knows exactly what to do because the risk is, so you might know the endo loop is, is something like a tie wrap. So you, you place um, a wrap around the, um, uh, the head of the, the polyp and you place the tie wrap uh, low so you can um, uh, uh, make sure that there's no uh, blood flow anymore in the big vessel that will be in your stalk. However, when the nurse does not know how to use it well, they, um, you might also be cold snaring those lesions. And of course, that makes it, uh, you in trouble afterwards. So if your nurse does not know what to do exactly, either explain it if you have the time during the procedure or consider another technique, like for example, putting adrenaline in the stalk and clip the, the stalk afterwards. Um, so my practical tips and tricks here are to position, first of all, the patient such that the polyp hangs down for easier snare application, but also in case the polyp, uh, the, 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 um, the stalk starts bleeding after the procedure, because if you have it then hanging, it will be much more easier to treat. Um, the endo loop should be placed low um, near the mucosal uh, wall, um, at least at the lower third of the stalk, so you still have place above it to resect the polyp um, uh, uh, radically. Um, so, and that's of course really important if you have a suspicion of invasive growth, and then you might even want to place the snare somewhat lower. 
Um, big polyps that do not fit in the snare might benefit. There's some circumstantial evidence that uh, putting adrenaline injection in the stool, that the, the polyp might shrink a little bit. Uh, but sometimes, however, it's difficult to place the endoloop um, before the, the, the polypectomy, um, or, um, uh, and then you might consider, like we said before, the adrenaline um, and place the endoloop afterwards on the stalk remnant. That you, that you have left, hoping that it won't bleed uh, heavily once you took it off. And sometimes it's really difficult to get the whole polyp in your um, snare uh, once you've done any preventive resections. And of course, then you can even um, remove the, the polyp in piecemeal, but of course, make really sure that the most important part of the polyp, which is the lower end with some stalk in it, that that is going to be sent in a separate pot to the pathologist. So you will hopefully have a result if the lesion was malignant, how much it grew into the stalk. So you have to think in those situations really well. So this is an example. As you can see, this is a, a relatively small polyp small end, but on a very thick stalk here um, in the sigmoid, this was. Um, and um, you will see that putting an endo loop um, is sometimes very tricky. This situation with the stalk on your lower end, so near five, six o'clock position, usually makes it nicest because you can see we can pull the um, endo loop relatively easy around it. But sometimes it's really, really difficult because the endo loop is so floppy to get it around a very big head. Now the, um, the, uh, uh, the endo loop is being uh, tied and we have to wait a little to make sure that it's tight enough. And that you can see here is very clearly because the, the, the stalk was purple. So now it's released, you can see the tie wrap um, and you can see that the stalk above is, is more purple. And so that means that, that it, there's probably little or no uh, blood flow anymore. So now the snare, which is a bit stiffer, so usually a bit more easy to get around um, as long as you don't get stuck in the, in the polypoid tissue on the backside, we pull it. And of course, now it's important to place it above the tie wrap with enough um, stalk still in, so the, the tie wrap won't immediately also coagulate. Then pull a little bit to make to try not to touch the, the bowel wall and resect. Uh, that might take some time. Try not to touch the, the bowel wall too much. And here I think you can clearly see that we did an effective measure because the stalk is, is huge and you can see the, the vessels inside very clearly. So this is uh, an example of using the endo loop. I also had another example, but I think we might run out a bit of time. So if you want, we can show this video later as well. So yes, when we do polypectomy, we're happy to do it, but take the time first to, um, to um, um, structurally uh, assess the lesion. And then, as I said, polyps smaller than one centimeter, I think can almost all be removed by cold snare. When larger still, consider cold snare, but maybe in piecemeal fashion and um, stalked polyps with larger heads and stalks, uh, don't forget to take preventive measures.